Hi everyone. So this is going to be a short video focusing on how much energy the Polestar 2 uses to heat the cabin. I'm going to stay parked on my driveway and uh, let the heating system run for a few hours and see how much energy that uses. At the same time, I'm going to leave the Nissan Leaf that sat over here with its heating running to see how much energy it uses over the same time period. So one thing that people sometimes criticize about the Polestar that could be a little bit inefficient is the fact that it doesn't use a heat pump. Now heat pump type heating is basically uh, like a refrigerator in reverse. It is a way to create and generate heat using less energy. Now some electric cars have this kind of uh, heating system on them like the Nissan Leaf and others like the Polestar 2 don't. And it will be interesting to see what kind of electrical consumption we get using the normal heating system on the Polestar 2 versus the Nissan Leaf. Okay, so yeah, let's get started and we'll start warming up both of these cars. Okay, so let's get the Polestar started first. You can see on the display here we're at 78% and uh, the car is nice and cold. The outside air temperature is 8 degrees at the moment. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to turn the, uh, the air conditioning on and then I'm going to just make sure that the car stays active uh, so that it doesn't shut off. And then we'll uh, go over to the Nissan Leaf and do the same on there. Okay, so we're in the Nissan Leaf now, turned it on, got the air conditioning going, and uh, one thing that's a little bit more difficult in the, in the Leaf is that it doesn't show you battery percentage on the display. You can see these bars give you an, an indication and it says 66 miles remaining. So we're gonna have to kind of interpolate a little bit just to see what happens. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's a shame that it doesn't show you the percentage on the display because all those bars, like, that's not the best way of, of getting information. But one thing it does show that's nice is on the main screen here, you can see that it actually tells you how much energy climate control is using, how much energy the motor is using, and how much energy uh, other items in the car are using. Our Polestar doesn't give you that information, and this is something I've mentioned in other videos, and, and I've asked, and I think many other people have asked Polestar for, is that it would just be nice to have more information. Like, in such an advanced car like that, we'd like to see at least as much data as we would see in an and leave. But okay, yeah, so we started off 66 miles and uh, it's nine o'clock. So we're gonna leave this for a few hours, come back a bit later and see what's happened. Okay, just for fun to compare, um, the Nissan has been going for 10 minutes and I've got into the car and it is already nice and warm. So you can, uh, you can tell that um, the car heats up nice and quickly, which is really good. It is very noisy though, uh, noisy both inside and outside. So evidently the, the way in which it, it does it within the car is automatic to heat the cabin as quickly as possible. So the Nissan defaults to, it looks like second from the highest fan speed. So it's it's quick to heat up, but outside you can really hear the, the noise that it's making. Um, but yeah, it's heated up really quickly, which is nice and very nice and comfortable inside within like eight to 10 minutes. Okay, so inside the Polestar, it's virtually the same experience. It's nice and warm, very comfortable, um, but it's much quieter, even with the uh, inside the car. Like the, the way in which the airflow works through the vehicle is, uh, it's, you can barely hear the noise, which is actually really nice. And uh, it's very quiet outside too. So yeah, very nice and comfortable. Same thing though, eight to 10 minutes, it's virtually the same temperature um, inside the car, which is good. Okay, so we're back in the car now. One hour has gone by and we're in the Nissan Leaf and it has used up two bars on its uh, power display and the range has dropped down to 54 miles from uh, the previous numbers that we saw before. So gonna leave it for another hour, I think, and then um, come back and do the final calculations to see how much energy we've used. Okay, so we're back in the Polestar after one hour and uh, we can see that the battery percentage has dropped down to 75 now so that's a loss of three percent from the 78 percent that we were at to start with and uh, yeah we're gonna leave it for a bit longer as I said like with the Nissan Leaf maybe one more hour and then come back to the car and see what uh, we've used up and do some calculations 
Okay, so that's two hours now that the car's been sat here in the driveway um, with the temperature inside set at 20 degrees. And we have dropped down to 74%. So um, started at 78% and used 4% of the battery to keep the car warmed up to 20 degrees. So let's go and have a look at the Nissan Leaf and uh, see how that has done over the last couple of hours. Okay, so the Nissan Leaf has dropped down to seven bars remaining uh, after two hours of being sat on the driveway with the temperature set to 20 degrees, and it's now showing 47 miles remaining. So I'm going to go inside, put this all into a spreadsheet, and then uh, talk about how much energy we've used in each car and how they compare. So rather than film this in the car, which is what I normally do, um, it's raining quite heavily and the weather is terrible. It's also dark. So I thought it'd be easier to just film this inside so you can see the numbers and I can talk more easily without the uh, the rain making a noise on the glass roof. So uh, yeah, I've, um, I've put those numbers from the video into a spreadsheet so you can uh, see that on the screen just down below. Um, but they're, they're behind me here. And basically looking at the Nissan Leaf, um, we started off with a battery of 83.3%. Now, this is a little difficult on the Leaf because it doesn't actually tell you your battery percentage on the display. I have to calculate that. So basically there's 10 bars available uh, of 12. So it could, be, uh, it could be slightly less than that, could be slightly more, but that's as close as we can get. So 83%, Polestar was on 78%. So after that test, basically after an hour, which is gonna be the, the most energy usage in that first hour, the, the charging loss was 16.7% for the Nissan and 3% um, for the Polestar. So in that first hour, obviously it's gonna use the most energy to bring the whole car up to temperature and then it'll use a little less thereon. So the second hour, the, the loss was 8.6% for the Nissan and just 1% for the Polestar. So that adds up to a total of 25% charging loss for the Nissan and 4% charging loss for the Polestar. Now, the, the big difference here is the battery sizes. The Nissan has about 22 kilowatt hours of usable power and the Polestar has uh, 75. So um, yeah, I mean the Nissan, we used a quarter of the battery for that. Now that works out as a kilowatt hour loss of 5.5 for the Nissan and just three for the Polestar. So I thought it would be it would be the other way around. I expected it to be slightly more efficient for the Nissan and uh, slightly worse for the Polestar, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I don't know if that's due to the age of the car, the condition of the battery, um, or just how it works. But one thing I would say in the Polestar's favor is it is such a well-sealed car. Like I feel like this, very few air gaps or, or leaks where, where air can get out. And you can, you can really tell that when you're driving behind vehicles that um, smell or emit a lot of smoke. The filtration system is really good and it, it, it seals sometimes so much so that driving downhill, you get this like weird sensation in your ears. Um, and that could be one thing that the Nissan does not do very well is it being an older car, I don't think it is particularly well sealed to the outside. So it may actually lose a lot more heat than the Polestar. Um, so that worked out as a range loss of 19 miles lost on the Nissan versus a range loss of 10 miles on the uh, Polestar. So yeah, that, that's interesting. So if the first two hours of driving, basically, if you're warming the car up and you haven't preconditioned it, you could lose 10 miles. So that's actually quite, quite a lot of driving potentially, but the thing that's worth bearing in mind is that the, the charging loss was, was greatest in the first hour. We lost 3% uh, in the first hour, so three quarters of the energy loss was in that first hour, um, and that's bringing the, the car up to temperature. So by preconditioning, you know, you could assume that you're gonna say three quarters of that range loss, that's seven to seven and a half miles. So if you're doing a, a long journey, 200, 220 miles, you, you could get an extra basically 5% maybe range by making sure the car is nice and warmed up before. Um, on the Nissan Leaf, like that range loss of 19 miles is a lot because as you can see, its total range is, is only like 80, 90 miles. So by having the air conditioning on um, and not warming the car up before while it's charged, you're gonna lose quite a lot of range. So um, this is a short video, yeah, just a fun little test just to see how it compares between the Nissan Leaf and the Polestar. Um, if you could subscribe down below and comment and like, that'd be great. And I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.